Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to mask the wing for the red paint. I, my local store opened up today for, um, uh, I guess, they, what do they call it? Uh, when they just curbside, I guess, you go to the you go to the door and they, they do all the transactions right at the door. So it's like a will call. Anyway, um, I was able to get the paint that I need, uh, just the red. I still have the other stuff coming through that mail order, online order, uh, made from a different outlet. This was my regular store, my local hobby shop, as they call them. So what I'm doing here is I am cutting out a template for the wingtip circle. So what we want to do is, um, I don't know if you can see this, so we're going to we're gonna cut, lay this over tape and make that cut on the tape, just basically cut out the circle, the complete circle, and, um, and then run off of that our straight line to here, across, and then to the other circle, and then our, our straight line off the back. What I need to do is center that and yet have it look proper with relation to the wing tip. So you can see if I if I try to center it to make both of these the same thickness, I end up a little bit wide here at the leading edge. So by making the circle gradually larger, I want to try and alleviate some of that asymmetry. A little bit's good. I, I like I like the idea of having it being just a little uh, heavier, but not disproportionately, you know, not, not just way out of out of whack. <laughs> it's a technical term. Oh, that's out of whack. They use it all the time, I guess, at places like MIT and so on, etc. Northrop Grumman. How's this look? Oh, no, dude, that's <coughs> that's whack. That's out of whack. Something would be bad if it's both whack and out of whack. You know, you'd think one is, well, that's in whack. That's good. You know, or that's just whack. No, it's just, it's out of whack. Maybe whack is just short for out of whack. I don't know. I don't know and I don't care. So we just want to make this, these radiuses, radii, we want to make the circle as smooth as we can make it so that our tape line will be as smooth as it can be. And we don't get any kind of warbling out here because of the way we did our scissor cuts. So essentially with this kind of stuff, every little task has to be done as well as it can be done because every other follow-on task relies on it having been done as well as it can be done. And that's that's kind of the whole thing about scale modeling is, you know, your, your work your work is affected by your approach. Your work is affected by your approach to your work. So the very first thing you do, if you study the plan and you look for tricks and gimmicks that might cross you up if you hadn't looked ahead of time, and maybe you find them, maybe you find a, a reference to a part number that's incorrect, or you find a, a situation where what's shown on the drawing just can't be so because of the way the part in the drawing is actually rendered on the parts sheet. I'd be surprised how often it happens that things like that occur. And and then, you know, the frame can only be straight at the end of its assembly if you begin with this with the laying the parts on and pinning them down straight. You know, some little problems can be corrected through sanding and shaping and filling and so on, but some of them can't. And so it boils down to how you do every step and how much, you know, care you want to take. So you can see if if the wing tips out here, that's that's not right. And if the mask is, you know, a little too heavy, that's not right. 
So not only does it need to be the right diameter, but we also have to place this thing in just the right spot. Now I'm thinking um, the depth I want to go at on the leading edge, you know, is about here. Um, let's let's say a, a quarter inch from the front of these blisters is where I want to be. Right, so this almost looks like it needs another coat of white. Under this light I'm seeing I'm seeing something I don't want to see. I know a lot of this is going to be red, but a lot of it, and a lot of it's going to be under decal. Hmm. I think some of this is the angle of the daylight coming in through the front door here. And that versus the artificial light just to the um, left of the camera. Yeah, the decal. So what I wanted to show you too is uh, how this will fit. So if we if we have this, let's say we place the wingtip about here, and we run our straight line. So this area in here is white. Well, it has to be big enough. Again, this may not be the side of the airplane, but this I guess it is. Um, this would go on the side. So you see, it would fit within. It would fit within the radius of the circle. It fits um, between the wing panel to center section connection and and our mask. So um, we'll be leaving enough white area for this um, registration number to show completely without without bumping our heads, without running off into the red with it. And that's you know that's the error we don't want more than any other error that we don't want. We don't want that one. <coughs> we want to make sure we have enough uh, unpainted or, or white area uh, to surround the registration numbers completely so that they're not getting in into the red. So that's that looks like we're there. And I want to say I, I kind of like, I think I like this look where we're So if I put it here, we'll be we'll be tapering toward the wingtip. In other words, I'm not. I don't think that's a straight line. I think this actually is going to be cutting towards and getting narrower here than it than it will be here, which is something I want. And then all I need to do here is make sure that that is a straight line. I don't want that to grow wider. I don't think I'll I'll double check our our drawings. It may need to just grow by maybe an eighth of an inch. So. Whatever this dimension is here, we'll just increase that dimension here by eighth of an inch. And I think that'll give us just the right look and taper to that line. And then straight across here and then again, just an eighth inch from here to their reduction in whatever this measurement is, we'll deduct that eighth inch to get us out to the other wingtip circle. Right, so that is how I wanna do this. That is how I want it to look, um, I think. So I'll need to review my reference materials. Ouch. And, uh, and, just, and just see exactly how that, those lines are, how that's delineated. Is that, is that tapering skinnier, that red, that red trim, tapering skinnier toward the wingtip, or is it a constant and, a, and then a wrap and then a constant. It seems to me, uh, if I'm recalling what I, what, the way I recorded it into my memory, uh, it seemed to me that they, that it was straight across here, straight across here, and then, and then tapered from wide to uh, just a, just a little bit skinnier, and then a wrap, and then from skinny, just a little bit wider. But I'll have to review that now. But this is I wanted to put on camera what I'm what I'm going to be doing. So uh, what I'll do is uh, we'll use the um, the frog tape again. Um, once I cut the circles, I'll be placing those these circle uh, circles of tape and try to get them 
with symmetry, measuring, you know, from trailing edge to the middle of the circle. I'll draw a line through the center of the circle, and then we'll just we'll use that as we we'll use that as a datum point. So we'll measure off the tail of the wing, off the trailing edge of the wing, off the side at the center point of the circle, and off the nose at the center point of the circle, nose to leading edge uh, from the side through a line through the center to indicate where we need to be there on the wing. Uh, tip and then you know for reference on the uh, trailing edge to try and get those centered so if, obviously if one's wonky to the other one that that won't look good either if we're looking at our wing and then we'll flip the wing over and repeat the process I'll get it entirely masked and then the idea from that point was to uh, set it on a, a surface and spray the top and let that dry and then flip it and spray the bottom and let that dry, and then I bought a clamp and with this clamp I mean to uh, capture the wing right about here and then as I hold it off I'll be able to spray that leading edge and trailing edge all the way around and uh, with this it will be only touching the, uh, the masked uh, masking tape and the plastic mask that I've got on there. So the clamp was about I don't know, ten bucks. It should work. I'm I'm a little concerned of about putting too much pressure there. It it locks, but it doesn't lock in just the right place. So I'll mess with the the padding. You saw the balsa padding I put on it um, on the clamp feet to try and mitigate putting too much pressure in one spot. I made them a little bit larger, but I think I'll I'll mess with the thickness on those and see if I can't get it to just click and they're just the right place um, without putting too much pressure. I don't want to crush the wing in the center. That would be horrible at this point. We don't want that. Got enough things that are horrible. We don't need that one. So at any rate, um, here we are. There's your update. That's what I'm going to be doing um, for the next couple of hours anyway. Um, I'm gonna start on that, and then uh, and then we'll get this sprayed. I want to get it sprayed before it gets dark. Get that red paint onto it, and then uh, and let it dry overnight. Probably dry all day tomorrow. We'll touch it again all day tomorrow either. So it'll be get the paint on it, and then uh, and then crack it all off Saturday. Peel the tape off Saturday, and then uh, look at getting all the getting the wing completed by Saturday evening. Uh, completed meaning registration onto it uh, and clear coated maybe two or three clear coats uh, over it and then we'll uh, I think that at that point we'll be good to go. It'll be time to mount the wing onto the airplane and then um, uh, Callie is remaking the um, side stripe and cowling decals, so whenever that gets here, I'll be able to finish the uh, hopefully finish the cowling and add the uh, Gilmore lettering to the side of the airplane. And then after it's fully assembled and before the windscreen goes on, I'll give it one last coat of clear as a as a complete aircraft, one complete going over with the clear coat, and that'll that'll seal the uh, the missing side decals and um, and everything else at the at that final spray. So I got extra clear. I've got the red that I need. And uh, one thing I'll do differently since I was able to pick up the clear today and have and have enough now is um, to seal the tape. Once I get this all masked, I'm going to spray it with clear to seal the edges of the tape. And then once that's dry. When I spray the red, then there won't be any way for the red to leak under. Only the clear will have leaked under, and that's clear, so you'll never see it. And then when the wing gets its final clear coat, anything that looked like it was clear that had bled through the tape will be um, reactivated and um, softened enough to where the uh, the overall clear coat will self-level it and take care of any. You won't be able to even see that. So. And you'd have to look pretty hard to see it in the first place. So that's how we do that. So we're going to seal the tape 
uh, on this one. I, I couldn't do it earlier. I didn't have any. I didn't have enough material. I didn't have enough, enough supplies. And you know, the touch-up method works if you, you know, mask off as as well as you can, and you sh and you still get bleed through. Um, you know, a steady hand and a and a fine brush and you know the right the right color. Um, you can fix just about anything and, and make it you know make it clean. I mean, I don't know if you can see the the touch up I had to do on here. wasn't much of it, but I mean, it's. I don't think you'd be able to see it. And the same with the wheels, uh, wheel fairings. Um, after touch up, I mean, I. I mean, sure. I. If you move in with a jeweler's loop, you might be able to see. You you would definitely be able to see you know areas that could have been done better, but. I mean, for my purposes. It, it seems all right so but in this case because there's so much area here that these long straight runs are and it's so it's such a visible part of it is this wing this wing is you know it's equal to the way the fuselage is it's it just draws the eye and you know if it's not if this is a mess it's it's you know the whole project is is a mess it has to be done right it has to be smooth so Anyway, uh, I'm going to work on it, and then uh, I'll flip this back on, hopefully when it's time to unmask, and we'll, we'll see, uh, hopefully it works out. So, thanks for watching.